Hello, this is Kyle Miller, Enterprise Solutions Engineer at DJI. And today on this video series, we're talking about different mission types. And within this video specifically, we'll be talking about how to conduct a geometric mission with a DJI Enterprise drone. Without further ado, let's go ahead and dive in. If we take a look at what the agenda is for today, first we'll be talking about what is a geometric mission, the overview of what that all entails, and then really diving deep into how to plan those geometric missions. First being planning on the DJI Pilot 2 app, and then planning on the DJI Flight Hub 2 uh, website that's gonna be more focused on planning over 3D models and then being able to push those over to the controller and conducting those in the field. And then wrapping up with a conclusion and some final thoughts. Let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about what is a geometric mission and what does it look like. When we talk about being able to conduct these different mission types, we really want to first understand what we are flying around. What does that asset look like? Can we simplify that very complex geometry of whatever you're flying around into something like a child's toy, a building block method is what I like to say. So if we were capturing, we'll be walking through an example of the, a church that's close to me on the right hand side, this building that has not super complicated, complex geometry, but we can really simplify it by thinking about what does that look like from a building block perspective. If we do that, we can then understand how we're gonna capture the different sides of the asset, what those sides look like, whether it's the pitched roof here on both sides, as well as multiple different walls that are going on that are horizontal uh, or vertical built, and then also this spire at the very front of the church and how to be able to automate capture there. So once we have simplified the geometry, we break it down into building blocks, we can then think about what are the different mission plans and mission tools that we can utilize within the DJI Enterprise software to then build a mission over this building block or this overall asset. We have multiple different mission capture methods with DJI drones, with DJI Enterprise drones, and those are broken down into three different buckets. The first being the automated missions, where we have our typical area mapping as well as Smart Oblique, but we also have some other new missions that DJI has started to build over the past two years. Then we'll be talking about flight tools, how to be able to automate capture with some of those live flight tools within the Pilot 2 app. And then also being able to, if you need to, capture with manually and some of the different tools there. But today we're really focusing on the one highlighted in red that's gonna be the geometric missions. When we look at the asset that we're gonna be talking about today, which is this church, there are many different ways of being able to capture this asset. Now I have two different methods here, but there are many more that can be done and I give reasonings to why I would want to either utilize number one or number two, some positives and negatives there. So definitely different ways of being able to fully capture this entire site, whether it's number two being mostly slope missions with a point of interest orbit, or number one, being able to have less mission plans, utilize a geometric mission and capture the entire asset. Uh, with overall with one mission and then capturing the slopes with the roof and a point of interest orbit at the top. So there's definitely not a one right answer of capturing whatever asset that you want to capture. Just go about thinking what are the different steps that would need to be taken to make sure you're capturing the entire asset or whatever you the portion that you do need to capture and have the same ground sampling distance the same resolution across the entire asset. So let's talk about what a geometric mission is and how to capture that. Geometric missions are made to capture uh, of more than one side of the asset. So it's not just capturing just the roof, just the one flat side, but it's actually gonna make a three-dimensional box around whatever you're trying to capture. This flight plan is made of a three-dimensional polygonal shape with the mission orbiting around the polygon. Uh, when thinking about building blocks, this mission can automate capture around five sides of the asset. Uh, the top portion of the flight plan can be toggled off if needed. So right now what you're seeing is capturing around four sides of the asset. 
Uh, and geometric missions can also be created on cylindrical polygons. So if you are trying to spiral around something, you definitely can do that, which kind of leads into point of interest orbits as well. So let's, now that we know a little bit more about what a geometric mission is, let's talk about the workflow of going out and capturing a site with a geometric mission plan. First off, we're gonna really be diving deep into Pilot 2 and how to capture those. So a little bit of an intro, the Pilot 2 has added the geometric route feature. It's not just on Flight Hub 2. The different applications there, being able to automate capture of different structures, cultural relics, communication towers, whatever that three-dimensional asset may be. It can also contain data with millimeter level or even sub-millimeter level GSD, depending on how far away from the slope or of the surface that you're capturing of that geometric mission. So some highlights there, you can click on the map to generate a survey without obtaining a rough model in advance if you wanna do it all within the field. You can also view the AR survey flight path through the camera view to make sure that you are understanding where the drone's gonna be going while conducting the mission. And then to be able to guarantee the accuracy, you can be able to also ensure what the overall ground sampling distance is and the overlap of the mission when you go to set the flight parameters. So when we talk about capture within pilot two, there are really four different steps. Let's go ahead and dive into those four different steps. First off, you're going to want to create a new geometric route in the Pilot2 app. This can be done in two different methods. One, by going to the Flight Route tab, and this is the method you see here, and then clicking the upper right corner on the plus button and selecting the geometric route. You can also, within the camera video feed, create a new mission plan and then select the geometric route. From there, you're gonna get the map view or the satellite view pop up. You can then click and drag to the parameters of the building. And you're also gonna notice in the bottom left-hand corner on the camera video feed where those boundaries of the geometric mission are. So the more that you add in of those uh, on the plus button of those pillars essentially, you're going to be able to see those in AR view. You can also adjust if you're going to be capturing a uh, polyagonal or a cylinder style geometric mission. And then after you have selected that, you can hit the check mark button in the upper left hand corner to set the boundaries. So as you move this around, I would recommend toggling back and forth into the camera view to make sure that you have set directly over the edges of the asset. You then, now that you have the boundaries set, you also need to set where the bottom and where the top of the asset is that you're gonna be capturing. And you can easily do this just by flying to the bottom of the asset as well as flying to the top of the asset. So when you're wanting to set the bottom base, you're gonna be pressing, flying all the way down to the bottom and then pressing C1. You're gonna notice that it has in the AR view a yellow line essentially setting wherever your the altitude of the drone is to that base and then when you fly to the very top of the asset you're gonna press C2 and then set the top of it if you do need to adjust you can always go back in and repress on C1 or C2 to adjust those if needed to some notes the manual input of the top and bottom height is measured in ASL EGM 96, that's the coordinate system that we're using. And then one tip, RTK is re recommended for setting the height using the drone. Whenever you're utilizing RTK, whether it's from an end trip connection or a base station in the field while you, that you're connected to while you're flying, it's just gonna help out the overall mission accuracy to make sure that you're flying as accurate as possible and not capturing the things that you don't need to be capturing. If you do use GNSS for height setting, just ensure that you have a safe distance around the asset, so no obstacles generally within 10 meters. And you can also use a manual input if needed for your altitude. You can see based off of where I'm at in Iowa, the top base being 853 feet and the bottom base being 808 feet. That's above sea level. 
once you have those top those pillars built around the building you also have the top and the bottom of that mission planned then you're going to be able to adjust normal mission parameters like you would do on really any other mission type we're going to be setting the distance to slope here i have it set at 11.5 feet away from the surface which is just under millimeter gsd or ground sampling distance so some really high resolution data you can also adjust the safe takeoff altitude you can adjust the flight direction as well as including the top base. So if you want the drone to fly back and forth on the top base and capture the very top of that geometric mission, you can. And you can also adjust the flight speed and overlap settings. One note is the flight route direction allows pilots to switch between capturing horizontally and vertically. You, have it, you can see on the right hand side now that I'm capturing horizontally or I'm going around the building. Now that would require, if depending on if you need to maintain line of sight of the drone at all times, if you don't have a waiver to be able to fly beyond visual line of sight, obviously the drone is going to continuously go around the building and you may be continuously losing the video feed, not the video feed, you're going to maintain that, but the actual direct line of sight of the drone. So if that is an issue, you can go ahead and toggle this to vertical and it's going to be scanning up and down and you can basically on the ground follow where the drone is capturing a lot easier and just make sure that you are maintaining line of sight at all times. What does this look like as a complete workflow? So we'll go in and make a new mission type just like we did before by going into the flight route and selecting the geometric route going to walk through some prompts here the very first time just like that we walked through in a moment ago so I'm going to tap on the satellite mission to be able to adjust those and when I go into the camera video feed you're going to see where those pillars are I can then fly around the asset and those pillars move in AR view to make sure that I am perfectly aligned I can also adjust more or add more pillars in you can see me click and drag there to capture the back portion of the church and once I have the mission the area set for the geometric mission that I want then I can go in and set the top and the bottom base I'm gonna fly all the way down to as low as I can off of the ground and press the C1 button when I pitch the camera up you can definitely see in yellow where the altitude is that I'm setting so I'm gonna be flying it really low I set the bottom base and now you can see in ASL what the bottom base is above sea level. Then I'm gonna go ahead and press on the C2 button. These are buttons on the back of the controller to set the top and bottom. And now we have that polygon built. If I go ahead and back up, we have that polygon built where we can see the altitude, the outer rings in yellow, as well as where the pillars are in blue. I can then confirm the mapping area by hitting the check mark in the upper left hand corner and adjust all of the mission parameters that I would like to. And then from there, I have the mission set that I would like to. And then once I go ahead and get go, hit go, I can fly. I can also adjust the start point and I can set the route coverage rate. Since there is a tree close by to this asset, I can basically adjust and make sure that I'm not capturing into that tree or I can back up the altitude if needed. And then I can go ahead and hit go and save the mission and then go ahead and complete the mission. So very simple workflow, especially if you're gonna be doing it in the field and you don't have a 3D model built that you can flight plan over. But if you are looking to be able to plan these missions at the office, do a little bit of prep beforehand, especially if you have uh, less time in the field to do this setup, you can build a 3D mission or a 3D flight plan via a geometric route on Flight Hub 2. What does that all entail? Well, we'll walk through the four different steps here. Uh, first off, starting with step one, by creating a geometric flight plan. So once you have created a Flight Hub 2 account, once you have logged into your Flight Hub 2 account on the Pilot 2 app on the controller, then the missions are going to be able to sync back and forth. I'm going to go ahead and create a new flight route and select the geometric route and select which drone and be able to name that mission. 
We also, once again, note that it's better to load in a 3D model into Flight Hub 2 to plan the geometric mission over. We do also recommend that the 3D model that you're loading in was something that you captured with RTK. So it is a very accurate mission uh, model as well. You can capture that by being able to go in with just a very quick five axis smart oblique. You can even do a point of interest orbit and then you can load those images into Flight Hub 2 and process a 3D model within Flight Hub 2. You can also process the 3D model locally within DJI Terra and then upload the 3D model in from Terra into Flight Hub 2 to plan the mission over. Next is going to be able to set the geometric mission boundaries. First off, we want to mention in the upper right hand corner, that's going to be the button select toggling between a polyagonal geometric mission style or a cylindrical geometric mission style. I'm going to just cl click and tap around the asset. I do recommend doing this from the top down view. It's just much easier, much more accurate to be able to set that. And once you have built that polygon around the asset and you click that final, uh, click that final button, it's then where you're going to be setting the altitude height. I'm going to hold on the control button on my keyboard and click and drag so that I have more of an oblique view of the 3D model. And then as I move my mouse around, it's going to be able to set that base, that uh, the geometric mission base as the top and the bottom. I can then click and drag on the top and bottom if I do need to adjust it. And from there, once I have that geometric polygon set, I can then go in and plan the mission route within the different mission parameters. So I can set the distance to surface or ground sampling distance. I can bump it all the way down into three meters away from the asset. I can set the mission speed. I can set the front lap and side lap settings as well as setting the vertical or horizontal setting. We also have the ability of setting the route coverage rate. So if you do need to uh, make it so you're not capturing the entire asset, you can adjust that as well. What does that look like? Well, a sped up video here of a fairly large building. I can click around that asset and then go in and even adjust those within the oblique view. Once I have that polygon built, I can then set what the mission parameters are going to be. And I have the top and bottom base. I can toggle on and off the top capture, include top base there, if I just want to capture the sides. And then from there, you're going to be able to um, save the mission. Once it's saved on the controller, you'll go into the flight route tab and then click on the cloud tab and see all of the missions that you have captured. You can then down or build it. You can then download those missions to the controller and load those in. We also, as you can see here, sometimes it's not a one size fits all geometric mission across the entire asset. So for this example, I actually built three different geometric missions and I did a top, I did a middle, and I did a bottom, and I can load all three of those missions into the controller to be able to capture the entire site. Like we mentioned way early on in a few of the other slides, you know, it can take multiple different missions to capture the entire asset, and sometimes it means capturing multiple different geometric missions. So some final thoughts, some final conclusions that it's not just capturing a geometric mission. Oftentimes you're capturing a geometric mission, a slope mission, a point of interest orbit to make sure you're capturing the entire site. We do recommend understanding what some of these assets look like um, within the building block method so that you can simplify the geometry and then start planning accordingly. And if you are planning within Flight Hub 2, we really highly recommend if you can get on site beforehand to build a 3D model with RTK accuracy to then plan the mission over. So it's very seamless when you go in for the more detailed data capture when you are on site. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to the DJI Enterprise team and we hope to see you on another video. Thank you.